right, so a first for both of us will be this uh, Avinho Cava. It's actually a reserve cava. It's got a no dosage, so you know it actually might make a good mimosa. Well, we can hide it with orange juice if it's lousy, right? We can hide it with orange juice if it's lousy. Yeah, this That'll be really hide it. Welcome back to another episode of Wine Mother Bay TV. I'm your host, George Bacharo. We are here with Camila in studio. I don't know how I got Camila out of San Francisco. It typically takes a papal mandate to get Camila to cross the well, bridge. Well, then I am But honored. for this guy, for this guy. <laughs> I am honored. Camila, I mean Camila is another in a long line of my former co-workers <laughs> that uh, still talks to me. Uh, only sparingly, though. So, you know, she's smart. She doesn't come by. how the relationship stays strong, guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's like a good marriage. You know, yeah, right. you're, you're, you're not home very much. Which right. is we why don't you're have still... to talk every day. Yeah, not exactly. Every day. So we're surrounded by Santa Claus, the holiday season, and I thought we'd do a little episode on champagne. I did kind of a rudimentary one, kind of quick, fast, and in a hurry last year when we first started. But... Um, Camila's been to France, been to Champagne, so I thought she'd be a good uh, resource to kind of talk to and kind of go through. Look, we're not, let me tell you, as usual, just because of Champagne, we're not spending two hundred or three hundred dollars a bottle. We're not doing any of that. We we're kept spending five hundred dollars a bottle because we're better than you. Um, <laughs> we weren't supposed to tell them that. It's no, everything's under know. forty dollars. Everything is under forty dollars. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it's under thirty. So these these are all approachable Champagnes that. Some of which we know, some of which we don't know. Um, Camila, why don't you tell them when you went to France and how long you were there? So the last time I was in France, I was actually there in 2018, which actually turned out to be a fantastic wine growing year for them because the heat in France kind of got out of control. Like it actually pushed their growing season a little bit further one and it also sped it up at the same time. So where they normally start harvesting August, September, they were a little bit like towards the end of July thinking, yo, we're gonna have to start picking out some grapes because it's getting too hot and grapes are burning on the vine. So I think um, when I was there, the temperature in the daytime was about 104, 105. And then when the sun went down at 10 o'clock, it was still 98 degrees. So it turned out to be a spectacular year for, for Champagne just because the grapes that came out that year, everything that's coming out from 2018 on Champagne, beautiful. I heard that in Bordeaux too. So to your knowledge, is France more of a, of a homogenous climate than California because it's like more, more of a compact uh, country? Yes and no. So I would say Northern France didn't probably get as much heat as the middle to Southern France. So I was at the time I was in the, I did Champagne and I did Nice. So I was on the Mediterranean and from and city to like city, that, huh? yeah, it was still hot. Wow. Like we're like, oh, we should get a cabana, and we're on the beach. Like this was not, this was not the best way to do this. But <laughs> you know, it's um, it, it comes with travel. You do what you gotta do. But yeah, I would say that the the Bordeaux and the Burgundies that came out that year also came out pretty pretty spectacular as well. So, all right, if you get your hands on a 2018 anything, give it some of your attention because it's that was a good year for them. So okay. Good to know. Um, so we have some crackers, we have some water. Um, one thing that we don't normally do here, in fact, we don't even do the crackers and cheese because I'm just kind of really It's because I'm special. She is special. Um, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to use some coffee beans, okay, to kind of cleanse our olfactory mm -hmm. and allow us to really, really get a difference in flavor, especially in champagne because there's so, I mean, everything is kind of close in style. The, you can pick up more of the wine's idiosyncrasies when you have something to cleanse like when you go in because if not oh these smell like grapes and you set it back down so yeah that's why in a lot of wineries they have crackers i mean they're not gonna i Correct. mean some of them have coffee so let's get into it here guys um we've got four bottles of champagne and i use the term champagne lightly as most of you know champagne is from the champagne region of france sparkling wine is everything else everything uh is. we have cava which is from spain and um yeah so we're just going to get into it uh how do you want to start i know we, we've had a little debate on this we really don't know what we're going to do here so what we'll do is we'll start with our bottle of champagne this is the gilbert joquetal and this one's actually a pinot monnier which is our reason for actually getting it pinot monnier is my favorite grape it has a much cleaner finish in my opinion than other champagne so champagne is typically made with chardonnay grapes which is like you know the premier 
great particularly to used for a uh, short. Sure. Why not? Yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> As you, uh, Chardonnay grapes are the premier grape used for champagne, and that's usually what people consider the best of the best. But in my opinion, I think Chardonnay lingers on the palate too long. Whereas when you're drinking a Pinot Meunier, you can enjoy a savory dish, a sweet dish, or anything, and it'll be well, great. They're, they're a little more tart naturally than a Chardonnay anyway. Yes and no. I believe that because we are in the United States, we are subject to a sugary version of all wines. So while I drank champagne in France, they weren't nearly as sweet as the champagnes that we consume here. And they actually told us that when they're producing champagne for the U.S. market, it does have a higher dosage level, which is the amount of sugar in wine that they'll add to the bottoms after their first fermentation and they're getting ready to bottle them for, for sale. Even in the, even, even from the same house? Yeah. I keep taking this off of here. So what I'm, what I'm doing here is I've loosened up the cage. And I need to move quicker because you don't want a live cage just hanging around your house. Yeah, you definitely do. Um, <laughs> you cover it up just so that you know you have control over what's happening with you. And you give the bottle a slight twist while also turning your cork. And if you're a professional, you don't want to hear that bottle pop that we all associate with champagne. You actually want a clean lift. So you've got a nice little fanciness coming out of the top of the bottle but you didn't like bump, which is what we're used to hearing for celebration but you know save that for your yeah for when you save or something okay guys so we've chosen not to use traditional champagne glasses or what everyone knows as traditional champagne glasses because we want to get those flavors in the nose we want to be able to get some air onto the onto the wine itself and get the actual flavors we're not just trying to put some tickly bubbly stuff going on <laughs> and this isn't ice cold either this isn't kind of an ice bucket this is roughly about 44 degrees which is going to mean that we're going to get great flavor from the grapes and flavors from the wine all together but it's not going to be cold usually when you over chill something you're not really getting the full flavor something that's a little bit warmer is more open and more accepting of its environment so as this takes on the oxygen in the air you're going to get a lot more a lot more character. It's got a little citrus on the nose, some women, a little pineapple. Yeah, there's definitely a little tropical going on there. Yeah. I'm not smelling any brioche or anything like that, which is probably no, because there's no is Chardonnay. No, I was going to say, like, yeah. that's, there's no Chardonnay on this one. So this but it's not, not a, bone dry either. No, not at all. It's got a little flower to it. I think I smell a little jasmine on here, but... Mm. This is that crisp, um, this is that Christmas that I'm, Christmas. <laughs> crisp Crispness. Not Christmas. Santa Claus is influencing That's what it is. That's yeah. what it is. This is the, the crispness that I was speaking of before. So you can actually drink this with just about anything. Like it's got just enough acid to cut through anything fatty that you may add to it. It's not going to overpower anything sugary because it's not sugary itself. No, it's not sugary, but it's super tart to me. Yeah, it's... Like my cheeks are all like on, oh, like really? popping. Yeah, hmm. and the edge so of my tongue. You're a red guy, so like that. I feel like that's gonna happen with almost everything that we try to do. Perhaps, perhaps. And now I'm getting a little bit of that brioche. Now I'm getting some some melted butter. Butter, yes, brioche. At the very, yeah, not. I should say yeah, exactly. Yeah, melted butter. Now, like probably 20 seconds into, mm -hmm. 20 or 30 seconds into it, it's still coming. So this is a good one. You know, again, anything that you're continuing to taste beyond 10 or 15 seconds mm -hmm. is worth your time, in my opinion. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I like this. I mean, I don't know. Again, this is not I'm... my favorite Mounier, but this is actually, this is a good contender. I would yeah. buy this again if I knew I was having some sort of dinner party. Yes. I and... would not buy it if I was consuming it for my own good. And this is $25, guys. Oh, $24.99 at, uh, at Total Wine. Um, I'm sorry, not a total wine, a K&L winery, uh, k and wine merchants. Well, yeah. okay, I'm going to have to do some cutting for that. That's all right. <laughs> Easily fix and k and in San Francisco. Uh, I have episodes. I go shop there all the time. We went and shopped there together. Um, you'll probably see some of that footage. Um, but yeah, so $25. This is way better than something that you might know a name of. That's $25. <laughs> He's talking if about you, know you I mean. Shandon. He's if talking you know about what I mean. you. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. That's exactly what That's I mean. funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm still tasting it. I mean, yeah. predominantly the butter now, but, you know, all those other kind of tart flavors have gone away. But, yeah. By the way, if you guys hear some whining or clicking, that's my dogs. 
Uh, we couldn't get them anywhere, so they're just going to be in and out of the world here. Which is no problem. We're not supposed to give them champagne anyway, so... Yeah, know. but we might. <laughs> Anything's possible. We'll see what happens. All right. No, that's good. Yeah. I enjoyed that. I'll tell you what, though. I like it more initially when it's more tart than I do when it's super buttery because a lot of champagnes you can get butter. A lot of Chardonnay champagne. A lot of Chardonnay champagne. Yes, butter, exactly. Yes. A lot of commercial champagnes. Correct. You either you get, get like super dry and like almost like you can't like you can't taste anything. But that comes from their barreling. So you also have to remember that Chardonnay grapes are the ones they want to get in that oak immediately. So. For sure. Okay. What do you think? Um so one of the most important reasons to start with the champagne from France and the champagne region of France is because everyone else is basically making their wine the same way, the Methus Champenois. And when you go from country to country, for anyone that's making a sparkling wine, that's the method that they're using. So um, let's just go to the Schramms. Okay, that's good. So for the second wine, we're doing the Schramsberg. Schramsberg was actually started by a German man in the early 1920s. I might be lying about that, forget the history. Um, but he started the vineyard, he didn't do as well as he had intended to, and then the Davies family purchased the vineyard in 1965, 64, 65. In any case, in the early 60s, they purchased it and they revived the vineyard from its dilapidated state in California. And they started making Method Champenois bubbles. And in their process of doing so, a friend of a friend of a friend tasted something, got it into the hands of some important people in DC, and thus became Schramsberg is served at every state's dinner from the White House, starting in 1965 with our good friend Richard Nixon. Up until just recently, I had no idea. I am a better server than George as well. Well, that's not a good one. I don't worry about backstory when I was working in the business. Hey, you want this wine? Great. <laughs> I want to serve it to you. What? You went to the list? Great. <laughs> Let me get you what you need. Not only that, you know, <laughs> if, if, if you want to talk about flavor profile, I'm there. Yeah. But like anyone with a phone can look up the history and I, that's, the, just, that's just the approach I took. Right. By the way, everybody, if you're enjoying the content here and you're getting some value out of it, hit the uh, like button and hit the subscribe button. There's a little bell icon next to it. That way you can keep up with all the latest episodes. I drop one at least once a week usually. Yeah, and by the way, I'll take pictures of all these labels and cut them in so we don't have to worry about zooming in and out. Um, but I appreciate you showing them the label. So in France, and I learned this at Laurent Perrier, they don't actually call it labeling of the bottles. They call it dressing the bottle. It's kind of like when you get up and get dressed, you want to put your best foot forward. So. They take labeling very seriously in France. So if That's you have a... <laughs> so like when you see a, a champagne label and you are if any wine label and you're like, wow, look at that. There are some places that have hand painted labels, which of course makes the wine even more expensive because you're getting a spectacular grape as well as a bottle that you know you're gonna save for the ages as well. So. Yeah, I mean champagne is definitely ageable. It's you know it's meant to be aged if it's good. Yeah. Uh, this is actually a vintage, uh, this is a 2019, believe it or not. Um, it's and it's our most expensive. It's going to be uh, thirty nine ninety nine at KNL. Again, uh, you'll find most of these at Total Wine and other big shops. Yeah. But the the Schramsberg you're definitely going to find pretty much everywhere. everywhere. Blanc de Blanc meaning white grapes, hundred percent, no red grapes, no Pinot Noir, no Correct. Pinot Noir. Um, so this is definitely going to be a slightly different characteristic yeah. than we just tasted. The color is very much more gold than the last one. Yeah. That's something you'll have to. Yeah. Show them in. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to see that, but it's more gold. Trust me on it. Not as much nose though. Not as much nose, but you immediately get that butter and that <clears throat> that toastiness. What? Well, I didn't do what we said we did. <laughs> I'm not sure you're gonna get much else though. Yeah, I get coffee. Yeah, you're get some coffee. <laughs> you didn't have to smell it, let it. Yeah, Plenty I didn't room. give it enough time, for sure. This one I get a little more green apple on the nose. Mm. 
and on the palate too. Definitely not as as tart, not as complex nope. as the last one. But surprise, super drinkable. Surprise. This is, you know. If if you're out or if you're going someplace and you need to either buy a bottle of champagne or order a bottle of champagne, like this is a this is a slam dunk. It's typically under a hundred dollars on a on a wine list. Correct. Uh, it's forty dollars in a store, give or take. I mean, it's not it's not gonna break the bank. Not at all. I can see that why this they would serve this at the state dinner. So the the acid on this is not high, but you can pair this with only with almost any cuisine across the board. Absolutely. So whoever you have coming into town, you want them to know you're celebrating them with champagne, and celebrating them with a champagne that's not going to interfere with the natural flavors of their foods. So this is the Avino Cava from Spain. Um, it is let's see price wise. $24.99 at KL. Um, it's 70% Zarello grape, 25% uh, Macabio, and 5% Paradella. Now, there's a lot of information on those grapes. We're not going to go into them. If you're interested, I'll put a link in the description box and we'll go ahead and uh, and you can research those on your own. Um, but Kava typically tends to be sweeter. And that's, just the, that's just the way it is. Um, that's the whole point. Not as sweet as Prosecco. No. For sure. Prosecco is the street hooker. <laughs> and Kava is the call girl. Oh uh, yeah. That's and then good... champagne is the expense is a thousand dollar. This is the brothel right <laughs> here. This is you know, you can't get it unless you have a, the right color suit and Oh yeah. <laughs> the right color Amex. Okay, for those of you that are too young to know about this stuff, actually you shouldn't be too young. Everybody should be 21 years should old, be right? 21 and exactly. over. However, if you are Amish, we are speaking of more of the things you're going to run into the red light district in Amsterdam. So, you know, look that up. Enjoy your rum spring up. Yes, indeed. Can I have the <laughs> cover so I don't yes. blow out one of the lights or whatever? Okay. Once again, safety over anything else. Over everything. It's all fun and games until someone loses an eye. Yeah, and uh, and it's it could happen very easily. So easy. Ha, ah, there's a viral video of a girl opening Prosecco and she leaves the cage, she takes the cage off of her, her court. So the cage is actually a second layer of protection to keep you from hurting yourself. But she takes it off and she's bumping her gums and the wine bottle pops, busts her in the neck. She's got a huge bruise right here. She stops her video because she... Oh my lord. Is what it on she... YouTube? No, it's on a... Actually, I don't know where it even originated from. I think it might be on TikTok and on Instagram. But um... but yeah, it was kind of crazy to see. And like, I remember seeing the video thinking, why'd she take the cage off? And sure enough, as soon as I said, why'd she take the cage off? Poof, pow. right in the mouth. Well, I was like, oh, poor girl. Wow, that's impressive. Okay, so. Ooh, that smells sweet. Is it? So this is a Reserva, again from Spain. And right away I can tell this is not as gold no, as the other. Um, even though all of these grapes are white grapes, um, all three of those, I looked them up because I, frankly, I'm not as educated in kava as maybe I should be if I'm gonna do a kava episode. Well, so this is a episode. A bit. It's a champagne and sparkling episode. Indeed. So if we decide we like it, we can revisit Kava's later. Wow, super floral, a little funky, a little sugary. That too. Oh, I think I wanted to say something about this. So the Kava is actually a brut nature, and what that means is that they haven't added any extra dosage to this. They decided once they tasted the grapes after its first setting that it was spectacular as is. So they're serving us the wine in its most natural state, which is after its first fermentation, they just knocked off the top, put on a fresh cork, and it's all finished. So that's something to note. So when we were talking about the sweetness of the champagnes that you know you consume in Champagne or in other parts of the world, uh, that sweetness comes from what's called their dosage. The dosage is how much sugar that they're adding to the wine to bring it to a taste that they think is acceptable or palatable to whatever market that they have. So this one has none of that. So yeah. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, <clears throat> but it smells like it's sweet enough, so I probably wouldn't have had any. any yeah, any more there. sugar, and it would like it would be out, probably out of control. And you can see from the glass, like there's all kinds of tearing going on. Yeah. And because it, it's twelve alcohol by volume, 
There's no possible way that's a, that's a result of the alcohol. This no, is all this sugar. This is all sugar. Yeah. In wine school, they tell you this, the, the, the trickling down, those are the legs of the wine. So the, the wine has a lot of legs. It's likely going to be sweet. And it is. It's not terrible, but it's definitely No, sweet. it's not sickeningly sweet. It's not, some, some sweet champagnes are bordering on almost a dessert wine. To me, more floral. I'm definitely getting sugar, but I'm getting some some sort of flower action going on, and not the baking. It's a little flour. bit. It's a little bit peony. Yeah. I'm not getting. The there's same no tropical. Lemon. Yeah, there's like no there's tropical. no, there's no, there aren't any normal citrus fruits or acidic fruits here. It's more floral, and it's like this is this is really this is nice. This is beautiful. A little bit of what you think about it. Like um, now that you mentioned lemon. I start to think lemon, and I got a little bit of you lemon kind of in the background. Lemon. It's something you have to search for, for sure. Something we can't show you is that this isn't bubbling the way the champagne and the sparkling from California Absolutely. Like, you can taste this, the bubble as you're drinking it, but it doesn't have that quintessential string of bubbles going to the top of the glass that you'd normally see in a champagne. Yeah, it's, it's like almost like having like a Pellegrino. As opposed to like a club soda. Mm -hmm. Club soda, the, the bubbles are so aggressive and aggressive. they're large. Yeah, the exactly. bubbles on this one are a lot more mm -hmm. muted and. Yeah, this is this is a good departure. Yeah, I this, is, anyway. this is nice. Now, before I reopen this last one, which is a Brut Rosé, I did want to mention something. Okay. I notice a lot of folks when they're buying sparkling wine, they think they're buying a dry wine when it says dry. That's absolutely not the case. That's not right. It is quite the opposite. <laughs> Unfortunately, the people that set up the little champagne rules have decided that they're going to mess with your head and they're going to make dry sweet and brute dry. Correct. So you want to see brute absolute, brute natural, that kind of thing at, to be the driest. Then brute and then uh, what? Uh, then it's... Uh, There's sec, demi-sec. Sec, demi-sec, yeah, demi yeah, exactly. Dry is the next one, and then second demi second are the two are the two sweetest. The two sweetest. Yeah. So you know, if you don't want a sweet wine, stay away from those. Don't be fooled by the word dry. Dry actually means sweeter. Yeah. So be careful with that. All right. The French don't like us as much as we think they do. Yeah. I I, <laughs> I don't know how much they. Uh, that's another story. All right. <laughs> Whole another situation. Yeah, that's more of a history thing. So we've got the uh, Grand Bec, uh non vintage uh, Brut Rosé. Okay, this one is from South Africa, and I believe this is the least expensive of the three. Yeah. Yep. Was. This was seventeen ninety nine. Okay, fifty four percent Pinot Noir, fifty four percent uh, Chardonnay. So yeah, this is going to be a very traditional. But this one they've dosed five point seven grams of sugar per liter, residual mm -hmm. sugar. So we're going to open this up and see what this is all about, and then we have a special bonus. We're gonna do something a little bit different at the very end. We're gonna mix some of the champagne and make a little drink of it. Champagne cocktail. Indeed. And mimosa. And mimosa. Well, mimosas are a champagne cocktail, technically. Yeah, but if you order a champagne to... cocktail in a, in a restaurant, you know, they'll you're not give you anything that. nonsensical. I'll give you a French 50, uh, French. French 75. 75. Yeah, it's like I know it's got a five minute, but it's not a 50. But yeah, the French 75, the Curiel, the Bellini. You hear that pop? He just mistreated me. I just totally mistreated <laughs> Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Uh, I guess some important notes for the Grand Bec. Uh, the South Africa wine region is all along the southern the southern coast and uh, they've got a lot of limestone in their ground. So they got growing conditions similar to that of France and Champagne. So they're actually producing really, really great wines there. Um, I was in South Africa in 2003 and went to the Stalinbosch winery and it was kind of funny to be there. The, um, the guy's like talking and he's make, you know trying to make all these points and I raised my hand. He was like, are you from California? I was like, "How? Like, what does that have to do with anything? He was like, yeah, we're not going to take any of your questions. We're going to talk to people about South wow. African wines. Wow, why and it is was that? So funny. Well, you know, like, so sparkling wines out of California are made method Champenois as well. But in 1992, the South Africans decided that since they couldn't call their sparkling wine champagne, they call it Cape Classique, and it's spelled Cape without the E, and Classique with, um, I think, two S's and an E. I don't know. So but in any case, yeah, it's not French, essentially. Yeah. So they call their method Cape Classique, which is basically tradition, or 
method one, the traditional method one. Yeah, I think it said that. In any case, yeah. um, it's made traditionally the same way champagne is produced, but since they couldn't call their wine champagne, even though they were growing in chalk and producing the same amount of grapes, they were like, well, we're not going to associate with y'all at all. So... This one is professionally scored also. This got 90 points from Decanter. Um, and I think uh, James Suckling reviewed it, but didn't give it a score for some ungodly reason. I don't understand why. You know, it's kind of just one of those things. Um... Who cares? Yeah, that's that's exactly right. You like you pick and choose your battles, and I mean, matter. look, I, I'll say it again. I'm not hyper focused on scores, but if you don't know something and you're picking it out and you yeah. get a score, at least you know it's not like complete garbage. May not be your style, but hopefully right. it's not complete garbage. But you know, South African <laughs> wines are still new to the American market. For sure, like there are a lot of champagnes in France that are not distributed here. The same thing goes for wines in a lot of other regions. So. They're producing spectacular flavors. They've got great grapes. They've got magnificent growing conditions. Um, I mean, this this champagne does have a lot of small bubbles going on. It sure does. It has a little string of bubbles, and it's pink, obviously. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of the rosé, it was left on the grapes mm -hmm. long enough for the juice to get some color. And did you know that this particular wine was served at the 08 uh, Obama inauguration I and 94 know Mandela? That. Yes. Okay. Well, then I guess I wasn't. But maybe I'm educating. No, it's, but you're educating, <laughs> you're educating your audience. Like some of these things that you learn about beverages kind of along the way just because it's fun facts to know. I like the nose. I like this. It's a very expressive nose. Um, and I like to drink with my nose. To be yeah. honest with you, I'm, and I feel like a lot of people that like appreciate wine on a slightly higher level, they enjoy the experience of smelling it more than they yeah. enjoy the experience of tasting it. Because what you smell eventually ends up on your soft palate in the top of your mouth anyway because of the way the olfactory system works. But you inhale this one, you get that melon, you get a little bit of florality. There's another little red fruit on the back of it and then as soon as you take a sip, like all the flavors start to open up in your mouth. Yeah, it rushed right through. Do you remember, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 years ago, the Starburst commercials where they have like the wave of fruit. Uh, yeah. It was like that. I mean, it wasn't Starburst flavors, but it just kind of came on me, mm -hmm. which is really cool. I mean, that's nice. Um, again, none of these champagnes are something that I think of when I go, okay, give me a champagne on the list. We yeah. need to toast something. It's, you know, $50 a bottle in a restaurant or whatever, or $60. And, yeah. you know, it's boring. Because, I mean, most people wouldn't see the Grand Beck and be like, oh, South Africa, I'm not buying any South African sparkling wine. Which would be a mistake. Yeah, it's $17.99. This could be one of the best sparkling wine values you're going to find this year. Absolutely. Get this by the case, because once yeah. people start drinking it, it's over. Yeah, once everybody figures it out, you're screwed. This is, I mean, honestly, again, not, not a wine wine person. I drink it, but I wouldn't buy it. <laughs> I would buy this. Eighteen dollars? Why not? Yeah. I mean, you know, how bad can it be? It's not bad. It's actually pretty, pretty decent. This is an easy first and last course wine. For sure. Easy. And this is something that even if you're doing that obligatory celebratory thing, mm -hmm. you're bringing a pink wine, you're bringing a blush kind of thing, so you'll stand out. Like yeah. if other people are bringing champagne, like somebody had a baby or whatever, they're gonna bring something they know, like a white star, yeah. if they don't know anything, or you know something. They're else. gonna bring something that everybody in the party will know. Yeah, you'll come in with this one, right? And like knock everybody's socks knock off. everybody's socks off, and that's what you want to do. Absolutely. And you don't want to spend Absolutely. seventy-five dollars to do it. No. I mean, I would. Like, listen, song. if you if you're not really if you don't really like that person, but you really want them to have a good time, mm -hmm. Grand Beck's a great way to go. Yeah. Great, great way to go. Even if they call you out because they look it up and they go, oh, this is $18. The minute they open it, taste it, they'll be like, yeah. okay, I guess this person knows something. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, this is a good champagne. I think that's one of the, like, that's the sign of, that's the mark of the ignorant when it comes to wine. They think that the cost of the wine determines the flavor of the wine. It is so not true. I have had terrible $800 wine and I've had spectacular $17 wine. Very true. So, you know, you kind of have to... As with everything, you have to educate your palate so that when you're enjoying these things, you know what it is you're enjoying about them. Because, you know, think about the last time you had a glass of food. Why did you like it? Because like someone you, told you to, that's why. That's essentially it. Yeah, of course. So yeah. when you start trying these different bottles, whether, you know, they're a little higher than you normally spend or a little less than you normally spend, you start getting these flavor profiles that 
you can actually talk to people about. Yeah, I mean... Because even at seventeen ninety nine, if you bring a grand friend to some place and you're telling everybody, you're going to get the floral notes, you're going to get the melon notes, you're going to have an overall experience when you taste this wine, you've done your job at seventeen ninety nine. For sure, and you can buy three bottles and mm -hmm. look like a big shot, which is my goal. I got, I got nothing, but I act <laughs> like I got a lot. So <laughs> I bought three of these nothings. Yes, I exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's yeah, all but... about finding the deal and exploiting it. Like if you go to KNL and you try the Glen Beck and you like it, I 100% recommend you getting this by the, by the case. This is going to actually sit on your shelf of great. If you want to put it in your, in your wine rack and hold on to it for a bit, this isn't gonna go bad because like I said, the Grand Beck is grown in the same conditions that your champagne from France is grown in. It just can't be called champagne because it's not the champagne. Yeah, this is all so. proprietary stuff. Don't let that kind of thing fool Don't you. Don't let it fool you at all. I mean, the same thing happens in California with Meritage. Now they have to pay some ungodly number amount yeah. per bottle. That's why you see that that uh, that label kind of disappear. Mm -hmm. it used to be everywhere and now it's nowhere because now you have to pay for it. So don't get fooled, you know, do your research, keep coming back to the channel. I'm looking for stuff that's a good value, that's mm -hmm. drinkable. Let me just tell you, if you know me personally, you know I do not drink garbage. I just, I would rather yeah. not drink at all. I'd rather just have a glass of sparkling water and be done. <laughs> I don't need to drink to drink, I want to enjoy no. it. So yeah, stick with us. Uh, we'll keep bringing Camila back here. We'll keep bringing, you know, all kinds of great guests on. Uh, by the way, uh, if you need any wine gear, like glasses or wine openers or you know anything at all, aerators, I'll have a link in the description box. Uh, just follow that Thanks. link, and then that way you know you can just kind of shop online, get it delivered to your house, and that way you can bring some great stuff to your friends or yeah. bring it to a restaurant. Think about it this way: even if it's a twenty-five dollar corkage, and you bring this Glen Beck at eighteen dollars. You're in a spectacular evening and you haven't spent some You're sub $40. Notes. You're not going to yeah. get a glass of champagne in a good restaurant for $20 a clip. That's exactly right. So, I mean, you're so, winning all over the place. All right, that's so. That's kind of like the, we had the Arlo when we were at a. Oh, no, that Arlo was ridiculous. That's listen, not even, listen. It was special. No, no, no. But I mean, in a sense that if you can find a wine that's drinkable that you love and you bring it into the restaurant, nothing we would have ordered off the menu at House of Prime Rib would have made that Arlo shame. No, there was no. nothing on their list. Like, they, so the House of Prime Rib has a spectacular one. So I'll leave a link, of, by the way, uh, up to that video. Oh, for the Arlo so, video. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Uh -huh. So the House of Prime Rib, they do. They have a spectacular wine list. They've got fantastic selections, red, white, sparkling, everything. But the Arlo that I brought in to, or that my friends brought in to, um, to enjoy, great vintage champagne. It went well with everything that we enjoyed. Like you could drink the Arlo from the start of the meal, from the salad, through the prime rib. And if you were having dessert, you could have enjoyed it with Oh, dessert. that, you could have so had that like, dessert easy. Yeah, you could do three listen, bottles of that for the meal and done. You could have that for dinner, like no problem. Yeah, no, no, no. But like, okay, when, you, when you're looking at your wine list, sometimes the wine list isn't going to appeal to you unless you're going to a restaurant. Like I would say the, is it the 1706? 1706. 1760, another <laughs> restaurant in San Francisco, I'm sorry. The 1760 has a very nicely curated champagne list. And they do mostly grower producer. So when you go there and you look at their list, you see things that are like, okay, this isn't super overpriced. This is actually a good deal. And you can pair it with great things on your menu. So like some restaurants, no, you don't need to bring in wine, but other restaurants, consider bringing in your own beverage. Cause even with their corkage fee, you're going to enjoy your meal better with something you feel more excited about drinking. Cause and you if know you're what, just too? drinking what they have, you're not gonna love it. Well, that's true. And you know what you can do? Make <laughs> like I, what I like to do is I like to bring wine. Mm -hmm. And if their wine list is exceptional, keep it. Don't yeah, bring it out. you have options. That's fine. You can have options Don't bring for it out. yourself. But if you bring something you know you like every time, if you come into a bad wine list or they're out of a lot of good stuff, which happens yeah, seasonally happens sometimes. sometimes, I mean, it happens to the best of them, then you have something that you know is drinkable, you know you paid a good price for, right. and it's $25, maybe $30, maybe even less, depending on where you are. And you're covered. You're good. It might have been. And they didn't even show my bottle of wine. It was so sad. Well, there are times. What can I say? <laughs> All right, guys. So we're we're gonna be done um, with this portion, but we are gonna do a little bonus section mm. where we have a little champagne cocktail. And we're not gonna tell you which one we're gonna do, but we're gonna do something. And uh, stay tuned. Okay? Yeah. All right.